And all we're really asking for is that our government would battle on behalf of the mandate we gave them back in 2012. opportunity, Marcus, to present to Gwe NGL, which is a group of 53 MEPs right across the spectrum in Europe, but it includes notably Syriza and Podemos. Mm. So we got to see two countries that are really on the front line of what's happening at the moment. Um, Brussels, it was a really exhausting but a really, really worthwhile trip. We made two presentations. One was to the, um, to the GUI group at the invitation of Luke and Flanagan and it went very well. Mm -hmm. all the, I think all the delegates in our group spoke very well and really really hammered home the truth of the situation in Ireland. You know, the truth as regards the debt, the truth as regards the reality that Irish people are living with because there's very much a false story, I think, a false narrative being told about the Irish story. You know, we're all doing great and everybody's fine and we're in recovery and, you know, unemployment and immigration and, and hunger and poverty and homelessness are all things that we just don't want to talk about. Luke Ming was very, uh, very solid in the way that he introduced us and I think because it followed quickly after, you know, uh, a session on the Greek crisis with Greek parliamentarians, uh, you know, at, uh, in attendance, it had very topical impact and very current impact. Um, and we made our presentation about the debt in Ireland and made obviously reference to Greece as well. Um, and uh, that as far as we're concerned that we were not uh, supporting the government stance here. It was great to finally realise that not alone we are not alone in, in Ireland, we are not alone in Europe. It was a great, quite a great reception. Okay. Just, just to do your heart good. Um, very interesting few days, um, yeah. very well received, uh, both the GUI um, presentation and the intergroup. Okay. Um, I guess it's the first time that it's happened that we had uh, most of the different parties, um, the Fine Gael, um, MEPs, um, all showed up um, at different times. Um, there was three, four, the four of them actually were at the uh, intergroup meeting and engaged quite well. This is the happiest I've been with any of the trips that we've made to Brussels thus far because I think this time I genuinely felt that we were being heard. We were very pleased with it and hopefully it's the start of something very good. What we've been saying on and on for the past four years has been true and has been shown to be true and we've got the credibility of Peter Matthews and um, uh, Konstantin Gordiev to relate to the, to the MEPs Deirdre Clune, by Brian Hayes and so on, that what Ireland is doing is wrong and the imposition of debt on Ireland is absolutely wrong. Marcus, this is um, Eleanor Regan, she's a, a long time marcher with Benny Hayes, says no. Okay. But she was one of the stars of our delegation. I have to say she brought a tear to the eyes of many people, including my own if I'm very honest. So I was handed a letter to read from a mother in Kerry who had been affected by immigration and the letter was so sad as I read it that I, I cried. I, Ireland always had immigration, uh, these were her words, but now it's worse because the country is bankrupt at the moment and they probably won't come back and she sees her old age, herself and her husband, uh, looking into sky. What makes this exodus different is that our country is bankrupt and will be for generations to come, leaving those who have left and those who have been left behind with no hope. When all hope is gone, all you are left with is despair. I will finish my letter to you by just telling you of my last thoughts as I lay in bed at night. Before I close my eyes, Katie is in my thoughts, but so too is Maureen in her imminent departure. I think of our two sons, and a wave of sadness envelops me. I know someday, chances are their dad and I will be left sitting in our family home, a life that was full of life and happiness, staring into a computer while we Skype the most important people in our lives, our children. Yours sincerely, Breda, County Kerry. The opportunities that we've squandered 
instead of dealing with the facts, challenging based on principle, based on what's right, we've spent the last three, four years putting on the green jersey, pretending that there are no problems when there actually are, pretending that our debt is sustainable, mm. and pretending that if we somehow talk it down, the problem goes away. The problem is real. We continue to destroy 500 million a year. We've done it last year, we'll do it this year. And we all know the schedule, it's not hidden, although a lot of people don't fully understand it. There's only children's hospital beds. Mm. And we're flattening these things. Mm. We're literally flattening these things because we're destroying the money. For the first time, we weren't just speaking with MEPs who are supportive to our campaign. We had government MEPs in the room. Mm. Now, we're not about finding fault, we're about finding solutions. And you really never find a solution until you start having dialogue with people who are not naturally your allies or who who are perceived to oppose you. Yes. And yeah. I thought that was very interesting and Brian Hayes did throw down the challenge of of continuing the dialogue at mm. another time when we had more time to sit down and tease out the issues. That's certainly a challenge that we will take up and to Maurice McGuinness and to the others and I thought it was a really big moment because, yes, I would like to sit down with them and it's really what we've always been about. We haven't had the opportunity up to now to speak mm. to representatives from the government in any shape or form and so that was a very significant thing. We've always been about actually solving the problem yeah. and you don't find solutions until you sit and talk with everyone. Um, so, uh, got a very good response, I think, um, then afterwards we had a meeting. Uh, with the Irish MEPs and a few other different MEPs that came in. Um, and again, it was very, very good. Uh, Brian Hayes was at that meeting. And uh, he wasn't convinced um, that uh, we, we... He was convinced that we were dealing with the debt and the problems mm. were being solved and all that. Um, Peter Matthews really responded very well to him, explained exactly what the story was and said, I don't think you understand really what's going on here. Um, we uh, met our Irish MEPs, Brian Hayes, uh, Mairead McGuinness, Sean Kelly, uh, Deirdre Clune, and uh, Marion Harkin. Okay. Now, uh, it would seem to me that they actually sat up and paid attention for the first time. Sort of the penny dropped with them, that it was a case that losses, particularly in the two worst banks, the bust the two totally busted banks, Anglo and the Irish Nation and Billing Society, is totaling about 31, 32 billion, that those losses have become very unfairly imposed on the Irish people. And this was a wake-up call for them. Do you think it's strange that we didn't get a referendum on the Ministry no deal? Oh, it, it, it's, looking, it's looking very bad now. I, uh, for what the Irish government did, a deal in the middle of the night, as compared to... Uh, I think it was Brian Hay said it, uh, the difference between Ireland and Greece was that Ireland had leadership. Yeah, I think right. what's happened in the last couple of weeks has really shown who had the leadership and who didn't. Um, if, you, if you change the name of the, the, the country, um, the, the debt situation and the mechanics of debt restructuring seems to be the same and a lot of um, bank debt and commercial debt being rolled into sovereign debt across the world. What was really interesting during our presentation was not just talking the facts to people from Syriza and to MEPs from Ireland, uh, to people from UKIP, interestingly mm. enough, who were very anxious to attend. We had three MEPs from UKIP at our presentation. But a fantastic presentation from Konstantin Gurdjieff that talked about the mechanisms by which we could actually scrub this odious debt. And it turns out from a technical perspective, it's not difficult. The underlying economics, the underlying financial modeling of us simply choosing not to burn the 23 billion in bonds that we still have in the central bank is technically feasible. It's feasible economically, it doesn't dilute the currency, it doesn't, um, it doesn't contravene any of the underlying principles of the ECB. Mm. If there was the political will to address it, and the irony of it is, the only thing that's missing is the political will to actually obliterate this debt. And when you compare and contrast that to what people from Syriza have done, and all we're really asking for is that our government would battle on behalf of the mandate we gave them back in 2012. Okay. But I think it's going to put huge pressure on the next government and also it's going to give a huge opportunity for people to look at people who are going to say, well listen, we will do it, we will go to the, um, 
Europe, I say we can't sustain this debt because the austerity is still going on. Mm -hmm. Low parents got to cut their, their seven year old kids, pension cuts are still going ahead. So austerity is not gone, you know. So um, I would hope that progressive government uh, would be able to deal with some of these issues and go back to Europe and say, listen, this is not our debt, we have to get a right, debt, a right down as well. But you have to be hopeful because right is on our side. Yeah. This is a really odious debt. Yeah. We are carrying carrying the can for failed private banks and we never can forget this and so yeah. you have to have hope because yeah. deep down in my soul you have to believe that right will win out.